So this is one of those books that gets a little mystic in some places. The topic for today's review is Sing Yi, published in 1992. The author is James McNeil. As far as the background on the author goes, uh, he has been studying internal arts since, I believe he said, the 1960s. Uh, Sing Yi seems to be a big focus of his, but there's also some Pakwa in there. Uh, he developed his own system called Splashing Hands. Uh, he's really into like Taoist meditation and stuff like that. Uh, I should say that in researching his background, I found some some controversial things, but it's sort of of the the nature of lineage related infighting that seems to plague the Chinese martial arts. So I'll tell you that some people like him and some people don't, <laughs> and I'll leave the rest to you because I am not here to make heads or tails of that. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Sing Yi is a so-called internal Chinese style. So the emphasis tends to be on developing qi or qi and directing it through the body. And as we'll see in this book, there's a lot of this sort of Taoist alchemy stuff going on as well. So the first section goes into sort of the, the history of Sing Yi, uh, including some of the lineage stuff. Uh, he does display two different family trees as far as, you know, lineage goes. One is the Honan school and the other is the Shanxi system. After that, we get into preparatory exercises. He shows both external exercises and internal exercises. Uh, the external exercises will be familiar to almost everyone. They're calisthenics, you know, it's things like, you know, push-ups and some ab work. Uh, the internal is things like standing meditation and also qigong, which is meant, as I understand it, because I'm far from an expert on it, qigong is meant to sort of cultivate the flow of qi, or essential energy, throughout the body. Uh, after that, are a series of brief chapters that have these numbered mnemonic devices. So it's things like the the nine essences, the eight fundamentals, the eight fundamentals which are sets of three posture reminders basically, like you know the three things to rise, the three things to subdue. Uh, so eight sets of three <laughs> Uh, there's also the six harmonies, the seven stars, and that one's about, you know, striking, and the six combinations. So a lot of this is basically on posture and movement. Uh, some of these are used more as metaphors, you know, like chicken legs and eagle claws and, you know, things of that nature. Uh, after that, he goes really deep into the, the five elements now, the five classic elements of, I guess, Chinese alchemy, Chinese medicine, um, it's fire, wood, water, metal, and earth. He provides, for example, a list of the creative and destructive cycles. So, metal destroys wood, you know, in the form of an axe. You know, water destroys fire. And then there's also a creative cycle to that as well. So you need wood to create fire, for instance. That's how this theory works. So he will display charts of these and also charts of, you know, the different, like, colors and organs and attitudes that these different elements are related to, according to this five-element theory. And then we get into the five element form of Sing Yi, and this is like one of the most fundamental forms. So each element corresponds with a motion. So for example, uh, water would be drilling, 
and metal would be splitting, you know, so on and so forth. So in this section, he will show the forms, followed by combat applications. He will also cover breathing as it relates to performing the forms, and he will also present a two-person form. Now, this is more common in the Chinese martial arts, where there is actually like a structured paired practice. Also of value is that he goes over common mistakes, you know, like leaning too far forward will put you off balance, things like that. Uh, then he moves on to the, the 12 animals, which is the second numbered great component of Sing Yi. As with the, the five elements, the 12 animals each get a description, they get a demonstration of the basic form, the basic brief movements, and then also a combat application of that. Finally, the book finishes up with a brief demonstration of push hands, um, a description of the health benefits of performing the, the various animal forms. Uh, there's also a brief section on it, a one page section on healing arts, describing those, uh, a brief section on pressure points. Uh, then he goes into the Lo Shu, which is again sort of an alchemical diagram, and also talks briefly in a couple of paragraphs about Pakwa. So, Pakwa or Bagua is another. Um, internal Chinese style. Xing Yi is considered generally very linear, while Bagua is considered very circular. The two are, as I understand it, traditionally seen as very complementary to one another. As far as the pros go, uh, I think that there's a really good explanation of how to perform the general forms. Uh, it's a very concise explanation. Uh, I also like that it shows the combat applications of the movements. And I appreciate that the book does try to cover many subjects, if only briefly. As far as the cons go, it works very well as an introduction, but it could be more expansive. You know, a, a lot of the, the subjects it covers, you know, get a couple of paragraphs and then he moves on. Uh, I also think that there's way too much mysticism in here. In one section he claims that, you know, a 40-year-old a practitioner in, you know, turn-of-the-century China, because he practiced Xing Yi, was able to jump eight feet. Eight feet is about the record of the high jump. Things like that bug me because this is something that should be repeatable. You know, if we had high jump teams, the track and field teams also dedicate their time to seeing E, if they are young, you know, athletic folks, how high could they possibly jump with all this chi cultivation going on? But you don't see it because it's not a thing. You know, it's stories. There's a lot of things along the lines of that. As far as recommendations go, uh, if you are interested in Xing Yi, I think that this works very well as an introduction. Uh, there are texts that go more in-depth. I'm satisfied with what it gave me as far as, again, just an introduction. You know, here's the form, here, here are the theories behind it. Even if I don't buy into them a whole lot, I at least understand. You know, I think he communicates clearly what he believes and what it's supposed to do. And I do think that it works very well as sort of that introductory text. Um, I would, of course caution people to not get caught up in the, the mysticism of it. I know a lot of people like that. It's not real. 
Kung Fu won't make you bulletproof? Ask the guys in the Box of Rebellion. You know, but I think that there might be practical value in some of the applications of the movements. So, that's all I have for this week. Uh, if you guys would like to help out the channel, or if you would like to suggest a book for me to review, consider donating to my coffee account. The link to that will be in the description. And that's all I have for this week, and thank you for watching. I'll see you later.